Now to discuss prosthetic socks and volume management. One thing a patient must be keenly aware of is the size and shape of his or her residual limb. There are many things that can cause the volume of a limb to change, including diet, activity level, health, and the length of time since amputation. A residual limb will also change in volume throughout the day. That idea makes sense when you consider what the limb is made up of. The bone in a residual limb doesn't change much, but the limb is mostly made of soft tissues and fluids. This is especially true of new amputees. When a patient dons a liner and socket, the tissues and fluids of the residual limb are compressed in order to maintain contact with the inside of the socket. Additional pressure is placed on the limb when the patient walks or stands. It's this compression that causes the limb to lose volume and change shape. As that happens, the patient's limb will lose contact with the socket and he or she may begin to feel disconnected from the prosthesis. Prosthetic socks are used as a volume management tool. Like pads, they compensate for lost volume by taking up space inside a socket. Socks come in different thicknesses or plies. Think of plies like layers. The more plies, the thicker the sock. So, for example, a three-ply sock will be thicker than a single ply. Patients can also choose from full and half lengths because more volume tends to be lost at the end of a residual limb than higher up. Socks are available in several shapes and materials. Each patient's Faroo prosthetist selects the best combination for that patient's limb. When cared for, socks will last for a long time. But patients should be sure to contact us if replacements are needed. Patients can apply prosthetic socks just as they would any sock for the foot. Patients with pin liners must wear socks with holes cut in the bottom. When donning socks, a patient such as this must make sure that the pin fits through the hole and is visible because if the pin is covered by a sock, it could get jammed in the docking device, making it difficult to remove his or her prosthesis. To test for fit, a patient steps into the socket and walks around. If the socket is still loose, another sock is applied, then the fit is checked again. The patient continues to add socks until the socket fits snugly on his or her residual limb. Prosthetic socks are a valuable tool that patients can use to keep their prosthesis fitting and working correctly. They help patients avoid irritation and discomfort. In our final segment, we'll discuss skin irritation issues. Skin irritation on a patient's residual limb is a common occurrence with several different causes. First, a word on allergies. If a patient experiences irritation, it is probably not due to an allergic reaction. For example, less than one one hundredth percent of people are allergic to the materials used in their liners. Most skin irritations are the result of poor hygiene. It is important to keep the parts of the socket environment clean and free of bacteria. A patient should wash his or her liner every night with soap and water. To reduce the risk of an allergic reaction, soaps without deodorant, perfumes, or dyes should be used. For a proper cleaning, the patient must remember to invert the liner and thoroughly wash both sides. Then rinse well to remove any remaining soap and dry with a towel. The liner must be allowed plenty of time to dry because wearing a wet liner can cause irritation or skin breakdown. In some cases, our practitioners may suggest using rubbing alcohol on the inside of a liner once every two weeks to keep odor-causing bacteria away but patients should only do this if a practitioner has recommended it. It is also important to clean prosthetic socks. Socks are machine washable and should be washed often for good hygiene. Friction is another cause of irritation. If an amputee is new to wearing a liner, he or she may notice some discomfort or irritation along the trim line. 
New liners are tacky to the touch and may pull at the skin in this area. In this case, the patient may use a lubricant like A&D ointment or Vaseline lightly on the residual limb to reduce the shearing forces, allowing the top edge of the liner to slide along the skin rather than tug at it. Patients should also be attentive to perspiration inside the liner. Sweating within a liner is normal, especially for new or very active amputees. Sweat can cause skin abrasions, heat rash, and may even cause patients to slip out of their prostheses. Fortunately, it's easy to control. When a patient starts to sweat in his or her liner, it should be immediately removed. A towel should be used to wipe down the limb. The liner should be inverted from rolling it off, and the inside surface should be wiped down as well. The patient can then roll the liner on and step back into the prosthesis. In some cases, mismanaging the socket environment can lead to discomfort and skin injuries. Pistoning is a common problem among many amputees. It happens when a patient loses contact with the socket while taking a step. Pistoning means that the residual limb is moving up and down within the socket while a patient walks just like the pistons in a car engine. When the limb repeatedly lifts up in the socket, the patient's skin can be pulled and damaged. As the limb falls back down, the patient's weight smashes it into the socket over and over, leading to pain and injury. Pistoning can be caused by air trapped within a liner, volume loss, or a poorly fitting socket. It can be prevented by using the techniques we've discussed. Patients should always roll liners on to keep unwanted air out, apply socks to correct volume loss, and immediately contact Faroo with any issues. Mm -hmm.